Hello everyone, so a couple of days ago I had shared this picture of the great Hercules cluster in the constellation of Hercules the Hunter. And that got me wondering, what would the view look like if we lived on a star in the center of this cluster, instead of out here in the galactic neighborhood where we actually live? So today I'm going to show you exactly that. And watch to the end of the video if you want to see the science behind these calculations. So our journey starts on Earth, and we'll start from some of our darkest skies in the middle of the ocean. And this is roughly what the darkest skies on Earth look like. This is from the middle of the ocean. And if you look up at the sky, you can see the constellation of Orion, the hunter. You can just barely make out the Orion Nebula. Up here, you can see the Pleiades star cluster. And up here, you can see the Milky Way right above us and Andromeda in Perseus right here. Now, this is a pretty accurate representation of our night sky. I have adjusted the stellar magnitude, field of view, and the exposure compensation to my best views that I've had of the sky from very, very dark locations. And this is a pretty accurate estimate. Now, using this information, we can go over to the Hercules cluster. Now, I will pull up Messier 13 in this program called Space Engine, and we will hit go. There we are. Now, I will leave the exposure settings as they are. I won't be changing them so that we can get a good view. Now, in the center of this cluster, there are far, far more stars per cubic light year than we find in our region of our galaxy. Uh, for example, the distance between the stars here is about 0.05 light years, whereas the closest star to us is 4.2 light years away. Now, um, 0.05 light years is about from the Earth to the edge of the Oort cloud where a lot of our comets come from. Now, to go to the center of this cluster, there we are, and this will take us to the center. Now, we don't want to be at the exact center of this cluster because at the exact center of this cluster, there is a, a very, very large supermassive black hole. That's that really bright thing you're seeing near the center. There we go. So that is the supermassive black hole in the center of this cluster. So we want to stay away from that uh, being near a supermassive black hole or actually a regular mass black hole in this case is not good for any planets nearby. Uh, so we are going to find a star that is fairly close to the center of the cluster, but not too close. This little brown dwarf or this little dwarf star here looks like a good candidate. Now let's fast travel to it there we go okay a little bit bright um, now let's see if there are any planets around this particular star yep there are a couple of planets let's go to this outer planet which is a frigid arid terra so it's it is an earth-like planet but much colder uh, than the earth there we go. So we are looking at the daylight side. Let's go to the night side over here. Okay. Uh, now we want, we are surrounded by this cluster because this planet is located near the center of this cluster. So we can basically land anywhere here. Let's, uh, let's land over near the center here. Now this is what the view would look like from our hypothetical planet. Now you can see bright stars all around and across the entire sky the inhabitants of this hypothetical planet would see about 10,000 stars that are brighter than first magnitude compared to only 29 such bright stars in the Earth's sky. And over 1,000 of these stars would be brighter than our brightest star Sirius. And if you have ever seen Sirius uh, you know just how bright that looks from a dark sky. 
and the brightest of these stars would be about magnitude minus 9 or 100 times brighter than the planet Venus appears from the Earth. And again, if you have ever seen Venus, you know how blazingly bright it appears. And overall, you would see about 130,000 stars with the naked eye compared to only about 6,000 stars from our darkest skies. And all of these stars combined would give an average brightness of about 20 times brighter than the Earth's sky during a full moon. So there would be only perpetual twilight. There would be no actual darkness. So not a great place for astronomy. Um, but let's go around and explore a little bit now. So what we're going to do, since we are in the center of the cluster right now, we will travel to the outer parts of this cluster to see what the view would look like from one of the stars a little bit further out. Let's select uh, this little star over here. <clears throat> so this star is in the outskirts of this cluster and let's find a planet. There is this planet <clears throat> near the star. So, oh, this planet does have some very bright rings. Uh, this one might not be the best option. So let's find a different planet because those rings would light everything up. And we don't uh, don't particularly want that. Let's try this little planet over here. <clears throat> okay, this one has some planets in the outer regions where we should be able to see the sky from. Let's go and land on this and darker part over here. Now from here, this is what the view of the sky would look like. Over most of the sky, much like our own sky, there wouldn't be too many stars. And you would see the Milky Way galaxy much, much better. You would see the entire disk of our Milky Way galaxy as opposed to only seeing one dust lane. But what would be dominating the entire sky would be Messier 13, the Great Hercules Cluster. And you would see it covering a part of the Milky Way galaxy with thousands of stars just swarming your field of view. This would be quite a sight to behold. Absolutely amazing. So I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, if you want me to make videos about any other such topics just drop me a line and now let's look at the science behind all this. So thanks for sticking with me to the end of this video. Now, if you're wondering about the science behind uh, what I just showed you there, it was based on this article on Gizmodo called What Would the Night Sky Look Like from Inside a Globular Cluster? And this was based on some research done uh, that was published in Astronomy Magazine. And the article right over here in Astronomy Magazine's uh, issue, the issue from July 2014, and I don't know if I can show you this uh, over here for copyright reasons, so I will just quickly go over it. It's called Life Inside a Globular Cluster, and I'll post a link underneath so you can visit it on your own time. But what that had found was that uh, they had looked at 47 Toucan. It's a globular cluster that's very similar to Messier 13. Uh, and this globular cluster packs about half a million stars, which is fairly similar to Messier 13. And it's about 120 light years across, which is again, fairly similar to Messier 13. So the densities near the center of those two clusters should be very comparable. And according to the research published in Astronomy Magazine, uh, Met 47 Toucan is fairly typical in terms of density of uh, globular clusters of this size. So again, uh, everything they had found uh, was uh, also applied to Messier 13. And this is a lot of the information that I had covered and in the article they had presented some of the uh, what they estimated some of the views would look like for example you can see down here what the view would look like and this is very comparable uh, to what I showed in Space Engine except that the view in Space Engine was much much better so that's how I know that the view from Space Engine is quite accurate. And uh, again, Space Engine does an excellent job of rendering 
realistic views of just about anywhere in the universe and I looked at the apparent magnitudes of, of the stars uh, that were visible in Space Engine and they lined up very well with the uh, calculated magnitudes uh, according to the researchers who wrote this article. So yeah, uh, check out the links below if you are interested in uh, reading more and uh, getting all the details and I've posted the links in my comments. And also check out my other channel called at Abdur Astro, and that's where I post most of the uh, most of the images and the tutorials that I make. And this uh, second channel called Space Engine HQ that uh, that I posted this video to, uh, this is just to share the wonders of the universe with you. And I also have uh, another video on this channel. This one over here is my second video, so check that out as well if you liked this video. Thanks again for watching and clear skies.